from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2019. Brought to you by Silicon Angle Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of VTUG Winter Warmer 2019, where we see the emergence and uh, connections between virtualization and cloud computing. Happy to have on the program a user at the event, Kanji Bates, who is a senior integration engineer with PS Lifestyle. Thanks so much for joining us. Nice to be here, Steve. All right, so PS Lifestyle, uh, let, let's start there. Tell us a little bit about that and your role as a uh, senior integration engineer and what that means. Okay, so uh, PS Lifestyle, uh, we're a national hair salon. Okay. Uh, we're in 37 states and uh, we have a, a super niche uh, angle. Uh, all of our salons are in senior assisted living communities, uh, so we focus exclusively on seniors. Um, and you know, we're trying to make senior life more enjoyable. Okay, well that that's yeah. excellent. We always we talk about you know jobs of the future and where there is growth. Um, we we know the boomer gem generation is uh, yeah. you know creating lots of people uh, you know in healthcare and uh, you know part of health is making sure you you're feeling happy about how you look. So I don't need to worry too much about my hair uh, these <laughs> days. But uh, we, we uh, do more than just hair. Uh, so the, the older generation yeah, we uh, taking care yeah, of. Yeah, we do some of the, like massage services yeah. and. and uh, just, just, uh, yeah, well-being. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, definitely not something we've talked about on our program. And after uh, nine years and thousands of interviews, it, 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 it's nice to have some interesting uh, angles uh, to talk about. So, you're a senior integration engineer. Uh, my understanding from so, some of the prep is uh, you're, you're really working on on cloud-related activity primarily. I, I am. So, so um, I came on board about a year ago. Um, I switched out of an operations role into a development role. Um, and uh, PS Lifestyle are looking to uh, bring their internal systems forward. Um, they've been doing a lot of uh, work, a lot of writing, uh, the stylists in the, in, in the field would end up writing up their services that they perform every day, uh, which doesn't really scale. So they're, yeah, they're trying to uh, bring the services into the present um, and get get away from having to write everything down. So we're we're building out like a. Uh, it's not quite a point of sale system. It's somewhere between point of sale and like an internet, uh, so that everyone in the field can automate what they're doing. Our accounting team doesn't have to re-input everything that comes in, and and just make things s flow smoother. Okay, so. Bring us inside a little bit. Uh, you know what cloud services are you using, and uh, th there's there's some coding that you're doing as, as part of that also. Yeah. So right now we're developing uh, in a PHP framework called Laravel, and we're deploying to uh, both uh, Elastic Beanstalk in AWS and uh, ECS, um, and we're we're building. Um, you know, so we have uh, our fr front ends are uh, all uh, Laravel in Elastic Beanstalk and our back ends, uh, we're building APIs in Lumen uh, and the microservices are in C ECS so we can have better scaling. Yeah, and you know, cloud seems an obvious solution for you know a, a highly distributed uh, in environment, uh, like as retail to often is, and uh, you know your locations are. Is is that how, how long? Can you bring us a little bit as to you've been on for a year, but how long has that cloud journey been going on? And uh, actually, a year. Okay, I came in just as just as uh, the company started developing. Uh, this has been on the on the horizon for about two years, and as they started ramping up, they brought on additional people. Okay. Uh, such as myself, just to stuff up so that we can actually work through it. Okay, and w w was there, uh, you know, AWS obviously the leader in, in the space. Is it was there yep. some consideration as to which cloud they'd be using, or uh, is it just no? The they they were already using AWS to some capacity for like WordPress hosting. Yep. Um, so it was just a natural continuation of that. Um, with me coming on board, I've been looking at well, what if we do want redundancy? Do we do? Do we try multi-cloud? No. You know, that's now an option. You know, maybe we start exploring. Um, technologies like Terraform so that we can actually duplicate environments uh, just in case on the very rare instance that AWS does go down. Yeah. Uh, we, so so we is, is that a concern when you know people say you know AWS going down? Does an availability zone sometimes have issues? Sure, but can't you architect around this or um, you know? No, I mean we, we, we've had issues uh, where AWS has been unavailable to us for like non-technical reasons. Yeah. Um, and in that case, it's like we were 
we were trapped. Unfortunately, we were not in production at the time. Yeah. But it's you know that's a, le le a lesson you learn once, and then you think, well, all right, I need a backup, just in case something does happen, and I know it's like very unlikely to happen. Right. So that that then informs you know what is my backup? You know how much mu how much do I invest in the backup? Great, you know. yeah, because you know, multi-cloud is one of those things that people talk about when you dig down. It's like, okay, can we understand why? Is that something you're doing because uh, you know, I want to have price leverage of one against the other? Is, it, uh, is there a service that I want in one that, uh, you know, I, that might not be available other? Or is it it's, uh, kind of insurance in, in your case, yeah, the saying, in, in, you know, in, in the case that, are, are you saying, I think, from an architectural standpoint, I'm not looking to run in both clouds all the time, but if I have an outage, I should be able to kind of fail over almost uh, and spin something up relatively fast in, in, in another environment. Ex exactly. So it's like, you know, we, we were talking about, uh, you know, possibly looking at Azure. Maybe that's a little overkill. Maybe we could just do with like a, a, a droplet on, on uh, DigitalOcean because yeah. uh, our entire environment uh, we develop in Docker. So that's pretty easy just to pick up and leave, uh, pick up and move somewhere else. Um, and you know, maybe if our, our, our standby environment is nowhere near as powerful, at least it's still running. Yeah, and so so great. I, you know, you've got the containers as kind of the, the base level for, for how are you developing. Um, you know, one of the challenges out there is, you know, DigitalOcean, great for developers, works with containers, but uh, you know, please correct me if I'm, I'm not getting this right. You know, you know, cloud today isn't a utility, so I can't just say, oh, I'm running on AWS and let me just take everything and throw it in Azure, throw it in DO, um, yeah. you know, or yeah. Google and the like. There's usually, you know, some work and prep to make sure that I've got what I need. There is, there is. So it's like, a, so right now it's like we're focused on on AWS so that we can work with their tooling, and then as as we start getting more comfortable we can start looking at extending that tooling to be a little more flexible to work with multiple providers. Yeah. Um, and cloud, you know, some people are you know, concerned as to, you know, how do, how do I make sure that my costs just don't uh, kind of spiral out of control? Is, you know, how does kind of the internal control, you know, is there budgeting process in place? Do you have a, do you have a good understanding around what you have today? You know, is there much growth uh, going on in what you have and, you know, what will yeah. be down the um, road? We've been actually very surprised in the, the resources that we get on uh, our tier of, of AWS. It's like we're not even scratching the surface. Um, so we, we keep looking at, you know, we need to, everyone says, oh, you need to worry about scaling, you need to worry about this and that. And I go, we, we haven't even touched what we have. Uh, so we're, we're right now our focus is more on uh, just making th sure things run and then start scaling as, as we run into that issue. All right. Uh, can't you last thing what what brings you to this event so obviously it's it's been doing more than virtualization it's been doing cloud for about five years now yep. um, you know what 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 brings you to this show um the community is fantastic so i've I've been working with uh, i in a previous life I worked with VMware which is how I got in, into vtug um, and the community around virtualization is just incredible very supportive so it's like I try and give back so come back and uh, yeah. And, and so, so just Encourage. a quick follow up on that. I know the virtualization community, you know, very welcoming and the like, do you find in the cloud world similar uh, types of communities? Um, yeah, so it's, uh, I've actually just started up a, uh, a VMware user group and an AWS user group and both of those communities have been fantastic so far. Uh, I, I work in also with uh, PHP, as I said, and that's a, an entirely different community. I'm not saying it, it's not friendly, but it's a different style. Yeah, absolutely. You, you find different cultures in yeah. these various ecosystems, and yeah, it, 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 it's very different. You know, the early v VMware ones, you've had people, it's like, oh, I'm used to being able to have to do a little bit of, you know, building on top of it. AWS is definitely builders, uh, you know, in, in, yeah. in what they're doing, and, uh, you know, yeah, uh, on that. So, Kenji. Really appreciate you joining, sharing your experiences uh, on what's happening in the cloud and, and the communities involved. And uh, yeah, thanks for running user groups. Those are always super helpful and uh, it's usually uh, done out of the, the passion and doing it, it's, it's not like that's, uh, that's your day job. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Kenji Bates, uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, I'm Stu Miniman and thanks so much for watching theCUBE.